Hey, what's up you guys? Welcome back to the beginner scripting series. I hope you're doing well. Today we are looking at properties. So this is a very important lesson, like all of them. So you're going to want to stick to the end of this. And uh, yeah, let's just dive on right into it. So what are properties? So properties are basically kind of what makes the game a game. Um, properties control things like whether a part floats, what color it is, how transparent it is, can you walk through it, right? So it's the things that the player sees and interacts with. Much of that has to do with properties. So we're going to be talking about those today, how we can change them, how to change them uh, manually and also through script. So yeah, we're going to be doing a ton of fun stuff. But first, let's just go ahead and look at properties in the first place and see how we can change them manually. All right, so what we're gonna wanna do is let's just go ahead and come up here to the home tab and click part. Now, if you've uh, looked in here, we have a new part added into our game. Uh, and this is actually a real thing that we've created, not a script. So let's just go ahead and hit F and that'll let us focus on it, okay? Um, let's go ahead and rename this part by coming over here to the Explorer. You can click the name or you can go into the properties and uh, click uh, change the name. Let's just go ahead and call this uh, properties part. And what we're going to do is we're going to use this to test out some different properties. Also, when you're dealing with physical objects, there are these four different uh, things you can use. There's a select, which you can just like kind of drag the part around. You can click move to move it uh, along the different axes. And then you can click scale to change the size. Um, you can also, with this one, I think you can do it uh, with some others, maybe not all of them, but you can hit shift while you're doing it and it'll scale it on all sides. So, uh, and then last thing is rotate. We can go ahead and click that and we can now rotate it. If your part is rotating kind of weird, uh, I want to show you something real quick before we move on. Click model. And you can see these little boxes. This is rotate and move. And these will are like snapping. Uh, these will help with placement. So as you can see, I have my move set to one stud. So whenever I drag or move my part, it will only move one stud to the right. So this little square right here is a stud. So as you can see, it's moving that amount. And it helps so that we don't, um, so that we can help have the placement correctly. But if you want it to move by, let's just say five studs, we can change that to say five, and then as you can see, it moves by five studs. Uh, I'm going to put it back to one because I feel like that's good. And then the same thing with rotate, you can choose how many degrees to rotate it by. Let's just say I want to rotate it by 30 degrees, then I can rotate it in smaller increments. You can also, if you don't want snapping, uh, you can uncheck this and you can move it freely, and you can uncheck rotate, and you can rotate it freely. However, I do prefer these on uh, for the most part. All right, now that we've gone over that, let's look at some properties. What I'm going to do is I'm going to click move, and I'm going to move this up. And we're just going to start from the t uh, the top and go down to the bottom, and I'll show you most of these, not all of them. Um, we're going to first start with brick color. If you click this right here, it'll come bring you to this color wheel, and you can choose a color. And as you can see, the part right here is updating its color based on what my mouse is hovering over. And then you can just click on a color, and it'll change the color to that. So that's what brick color is. Cast shadow is um, basically should it cast a shadow so you can see right here uh, so you can see the shadow right here if I uncheck it it will no longer have a shadow if I check it again it will have a shadow so it's pretty straightforward color is also the same thing as brick color but it goes by RGB uh, red green blue and we can change the numbers to create a new color each number is separated by a color so how much red do you want it is the first number how much uh, green do you want it is the second color and how much blue so let's just put some random numbers in here 233 comma 5 comma 215 or 216 15 <laughs> and as you can see it's changed based on the RGB okay so uh, we can go ahead and go to the uh, brick color because I like to use that when it comes to color all right perfect next there is material and this is actually really cool I'm gonna scale it up so you can see it better but material is a really cool property because we can change the material of the part. Um, and I'm going to let you guys go ahead and play with all of them, but I'll just show you a couple. There's Here is um, brick. As you can see, it changes the, proper, or the uh, material to brick. You can do cobblestone, and it changes to cobblestone. So you can change these to a lot. There's glass. Um, there's granite. And there's slates. There's a lot of different, um, you know, uh, materials you can use. We're going to skip reflectance. I barely use that, um, but you can search that up if you want to learn more about that. 
Transparency, I use this all the time. Transparency, you can click on it and it'll bring up a number and a slider. Let's just play with the slider real quick and as you can see as we slide down our property, I mean our part um, starts to become more invisible or more visible. Zero means it's fully visible, one means it's fully invisible, and anything in between that will be somewhere in between. So we can change the number directly if we wanted to, set it to one, we can set it to 0.45 and stuff like that. So let's just keep it at zero so we can see it. Okay, we're gonna skip these. Locked, um, basically if you check this, uh, you can no longer click this in the explorer, or I mean in your game view, you have to go into the explorer to find it. Um, it is helpful if you are uh, modeling a ton of things and you don't want to accidentally click something else. Uh, like the base plate is locked so you can't just grab it. Um, so that's what you could use that for. Next is the name, we've gone over that. Next is parents, so let's talk real quick about parents and children. Um, parents and children are super important when we write scripts. Um, it basically tells the part or um, it's, it's whatever the part is inside of. So let me just give you an example. The works, we have this workspace right here. And the, by the way, the workspace is what are the 3D objects that the player will see, okay? That is what the workspace consists of. Um, so any parts that you want the player to see on their end is going to be in there. If you drag a part anywhere else to any of these other categories, you will notice that uh, they do not show up. They're still there, they're just in a different spot, and we'll use them later. Um, we have players right here. This houses all the players. Lighting has the different, uh, like the atmosphere and the skybox. Replicated first and storage, as well as server storage, are all different storage units that you can use for um, different parts. So if you're going to spawn them in later during the game. Server script service is where we mainly handle our uh, server scripts. Starter GUI handles the GUIs, which we'll get into in a later episode. Starter Pack is with tools. Starter Player is some scripts that we can start the player out with. And then all the rest we're not going to get into right now. So let's get back to parents and children. Simply put, a parent is what this part is inside of. So as you can see, properties part is inside of the workspace. Okay, so the property the properties part its parent is the workspace, okay? If we were to drag this into the base plate, its parent would now be the base plate. We can actually click these arrows to open and close it and see what's inside of it and see its uh, children. Now, uh, the children are whatever is inside of an object. So base plate uh, has two children. It has this texture and it has this properties part. Let's go ahead and take this properties part back outside and let's put it in the workspace. And now workspace has a ton of children. It has camera, terrain, spawn location, base plate, and properties part. So I hope that makes sense. Descendants is everything inside of it. So if we were to completely empty this out, or I mean open, open all these up, everything inside of the workspace even things inside of like the base plate are the workspace's descendants. But don't worry if that doesn't make sense to you right now, it, sh it doesn't have to. So I hope that made sense with parents and children. I didn't get it when I first started scripting, so I really want to make sure you guys do. Alright, next we have this category of transformation. Uh, we can use size to change the size of it, or we can use the scale tool. Um, but you can manually change it um, by typing in three numbers separated by commas. We use three numbers because it's an X, Y, and Z. We use kind of a coordinate. Uh, actually, it's not kind of. It is completely a coordinate. It is an X, Y, and Z coordinate plane. That's how 3D uh, game engines run. They have a an X coordinate, a Y coordinate, and a Z coordinate. If you've done geometry or algebra, you know what I'm talking about with an X, Y coordinate. And now you just add a Z coordinate so that it makes it three dimensional. Next, we have position. And um, that is actually where it is located on the X, Y, and Z. Size is just the size on each X, Y, and Z. So it's on X, it's 12 units. On Y, it's 2.75 units. Oh, I'm sorry. This is X. Um, on X, it's 12 units. On And it, and it goes by studs. Um, so this is 2.75 studs. And this is 20 studs long so, long. so I hope that makes sense. Position also is the XYZ coordinate. Um, and then if you click up here in view, 
you can open this thing called the view selector and it'll show you this little die in the corner that will show you when and where the x y and z coordinates are as you can see if i turn my camera this way i can see that the x coordinate is along my screen right now if i turn it here we are facing toward the z axis and if i turn it up well up and down is the y okay um we're gonna skip these now we're gonna go into collision we're not going to touch on can touch, we're just going to touch on can collide. So um, if you, I'm going to pl uh, play this game so you can kind of see what happens. But I'm going to scale this up. And I'm going to kind of make it in this sort of a shape. And then what I'm going to do, actually before we get into can collide, I'm going to show you anchored. Anchored um, is should the, basically should the part s stay where it is or not. So if if I were to run this right now, so you can, instead of playing, you can click this little drop down arrow and run it. And this will just not add your player in, but play the game as if a player was there. So I'm going to click run. As you can see, our properties part falls down. And that's because it is not anchored. If we were to anchor the part, let's go ahead and come in here. And you can also just click anchored up here. There are a lot of different shortcuts up here. You can choose the material and color from up here. Uh, whoops, I didn't mean to do that. Now that we have it anchored, let's go ahead and hit play. And now it's staying up in the air. You also want to use anchored if you don't want a player to be able to knock down this. So I don't want a player to be able to knock down it, so I'm going to keep it anchored. And now let's go ahead and try out what can collide is. I'm going to go ahead and hit play. And as you can see, if I try and walk into the part, it won't fall over and it's not letting me through. And that's because can collide is on. If we uncheck can collide, so set can collide to false you will notice we can do the same thing but we can walk straight through it so that's what can collide does can other things pass through it and those are all the properties we're going to touch on so there they are that's how to change them manually now let's learn how to change them through script so i told you that you you keep most of your scripts inside of service script service and that's usually the case when you're doing um, a lot of a lot of th different things but we can also put them in pretty much anywhere else um, I wouldn't put them in starter, any of the starters, starter GUI, starter pack, or starter player. Those are more for local scripts, but let's go ahead and put a script inside of this properties part. And let's start, um, referencing these properties and changing them through script. So what we can say is we can say script, and by the way, script, whenever we say script inside of a script, that it is talking about itself, okay? So let's rename this script to properties script. And we'll just say script.parent, right? A parent is uh, the parent, so what we're inside of. So this is the properties part, right? That is the parent of the property script. So we're talking about the properties part, and we can just say, let's go ahead and say dot, and we separate each part by a dot, so script.parent. And then to change a property, we also use a dot. So when we use dots, we're either going into a parent or child, or we're changing a property, okay? Pretty much. That's usually what's going to happen. So we can say script.parent, and let's change a property. Let's do the first one. Let's do brick color, and let's change it. We can say equals, and we're going to set it to something else. We can say brick color. This is how each property kind of has its own way um, of changing them. This is how we change brick color. We can say brick color dot new. And then we add quotation marks. And then you can see all these colors right here. And you can just choose one and like double click it. Let's just do camo. And now let's hit run. And as you can see, it has changed our block to be the color we specified. Now what if we want it to change color randomly and surprise us? We can say brick color dot random with parentheses here. Now let's go ahead and hit run. And as you can see, it's chosen a new color. If we hit run again, it chooses a new color, and it surprises us with a random color. By the way, if you're wondering what I've been doing, and I start a line, and then I finish it, if you start writing something, and the script gives you a suggestion, you can just hit enter, and it'll finish that for you. Sometimes it's not right, though, so you don't always want to use that. Next, let's change another property. Let's just change the anchored. We can say script.parent.anchored. And this one's a bool, we're just going to say false, so we want it to fall. To test this out, I'm going to go ahead and move the part up. Now let's hit run. By the way, I forgot to turn can collide off. If you tried that now and your can collide was off, um, it will go straight through the base plate, but let's hit run. 
as you can see, it's a new color, and it drops because it is anchored. Alright, so now that we've done that, let's just go ahead and change a couple more properties just so I can help you uh, understand it a little bit better. Let's change the material. So for this, we'll say script.parent.material equals to, and now we're going to learn a brand new thing. Um, we're going to talk about enum. We're not going to talk a lot about it, but enum is super, super helpful. Um, it houses a lot of different things. And um, if you say enum dot, there are so many different things that you can uh, write. But for this one, we'll just say enum dot material dot, and then we can choose the material we want it to be. What if I want it to be snow? No problem. I'm going to change the property to enum.material.snow. And as you can see, if we go ahead and zoom in, this is Roblox's material for snow. We can change that to whatever material material we want, enum.material, let's just say .neon, and let's hit run. As you can see, it is like a neon glowing sort of part. So that's enum. Let's change one more property, and that's the transparency. We'll say script.parent.transparency equals 1. Actually, let's just say 0.5 so we can still see it. And now let's go ahead and hit play. Random color, neon, unanchored, and now it is partly transparent. We can sort of th see through it. All right, there we go. That is how properties work. Let's go ahead and do one more script inside of server script service so that we can um, try this out inside of server script service. Let's name this properties script as well. And we'll just say, instead of saying script.parent, because that is not, the, the parent of the script is server script service now, we can say game. And the game is literally our game. It is everything in this explorer. So now we can say game.workspace, okay? So now we're going into the workspace and we're going to find the properties part, dot properties part. And then let's just say dot anchored equals to false. And then let's say wait one. I didn't talk about this yet, but you can use wait parentheses and then put a number in here. And this will just wait that many seconds. So it'll wait one second before we continue. And let's just say game dot workspace dot properties part dot anchored equals to true. So we're going to um, unanchor it. Let's go ahead and actually get rid of this line in here where we have script.parent.anchored. You can also do, I know that this is a lot packed into one episode, but you can do dash dash and that'll comment it out. Basically, it just, the script will ignore it. So let's go ahead and raise this block way up because it's going to be falling for a second because we set anchor to false and then it's going to um, stop falling. So let's hit run. Oh, so we have one pro one problem, and that is that when we hit run, the um, it appears that the um, part just wasn't loaded in yet. So let's just say wait five up here. So it's going to wait five seconds and make sure that the properties part has been loaded in, and then it should drop and and stop dropping after a second. There you go. And boom, it's now frozen. That is pretty cool. Um, I hope you also thought it was too. I hope you enjoyed this video all about properties. If it helped, please do leave a like. Also smash that subscribe button and click that notification bell. Also thanks to my first Patreon. Thank you so much um, for still for continuing to be a Patreon. If you want your name shouted out at the end of my videos, then all you have to do is become a Patreon. Any tier will get that. There's also source code and uh, other perks as well. Also make sure to join my Discord server linked in the description. Next part will be coming out, I believe, next week. So if that is already out, it'll be up on your screen now. If it is not, make sure to subscribe. And thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.